Hello artists! Today we are going to learn how to create a textured background with paint. The supplies you will need are a blue piece of paper or frankly any color of paper but you will need some blue paint, some white paint, and another cup to mix your paints in. You can also use a paper plate if you don't have little cups at home or if you don't want to dirty a dish. Then you're going to need a pencil to write your name, some sponges if you have some laying around or if you want to go buy some, and a paper towel. The background we are going to create is going to look like a sky with little pieces of cloud and white brightness to show light and difference in color. I'm going to start by opening up my paints. And you also might want to have newspaper or a messy mat underneath where you're working just because this project can get a little bit sticky. I'm going to open up all three of my paints and then I can grab a sponge. Oh, but wait, what do I need to do? Write my name on that paper. That's better. And then I need to flip that paper over so I have a nice clean area on which to paint. Now, in class we've been talking about two different artists that both painted with lots and lots of blue and white tints. Vincent Van Gogh and Claude Monet. Claude Monet was an impressionist. He painted with a lot of colors that had a lot of light interacting with them. So one of the ways we can change our background is to make it look like water with dapples of light on it. I'll show you how to do that. And with Vincent Van Gogh, with his layering of paint, he was a post-impressionist. He used lots of different colors and heavy application of paint to create the look of different objects that he was trying to paint. So I will show you two different ways to create a background. And depending on which project you want to do, you can choose which one works best. But the cool thing is they start the same way. So I am going to start by pouring some of my white paint into an empty cup, and I'm pretending because I already did this, guys. I would pour some of my white paint into a cup and a little tiny bit of my blue paint, and that would create this cool swirl effect, but it's also going to create a tint of blue, which is white plus blue. And I think I'm going to start with my dark blue. I'm going to take the edge of my sponge and fill it up with paint. And like I said, this could get messy. So maybe wear a smock or a paint shirt or just be prepared to have to wash your hands and keep your hands away from your clothes. I know it's hard sometimes because you just get sticky and icky and you want right, to wipe your hands off, but try your best not to. So I'm going to try and fill my whole paper with this technique. And it can go fast. And I'm going to speed up just a little bit so we're not here all day watching Miss Canik put sponges on paper. And yeah, I like that dark blue on that light blue. That looks nice. Whatever color paper you have at home will work just fine. When I'm done with one color, I can grab another sponge or I can use the same sponge. I tell you. Most artists in the time that Van Gogh and Monet were alive, if they couldn't afford to use and buy lots and lots of brushes, they would just reuse the same brush for the different colors they needed after they cleaned them. Just like what I show you guys how to do. You gotta clean that brush every time you change your color. If you have more than one sponge, you should change out your sponge when you choose a different color to use. I love mixing these colors together because they make such a cool design pattern. I'm going to try and fill my whole paper up. Notice that I'm not painting with my straight white yet, and I'll show you why very, very soon. So I'm going to fill up my paper. The paint will stay wet for a little while, so make sure that you or your grown-up has made a space for your paint to dry, because we don't want anybody sticking their elbows or fingers into your painting, I tell you. All right, most of that's pretty full. Try to get most of the paper covered up with your sponge technique. What I like about this is it creates the soft look of Monet, 
But if you change the way that you use your sponge, you can also make it look like the impasto style of Vincent van Gogh. And Vincent van Gogh used short, heavy applications of paint in his brush strokes. So you could see that the paint had moved and how it was traveling across the canvas. So on one side, I'm going to show you a Van Gogh style technique. And on the other, we'll just leave it and it'll look more like a Monet. Oh, gotta switch out my sponge. Get a little more blue on here. Heavy application of paint with directional brush strokes. Directional meaning they go one way or the other. They're not just super duper random. There we go. So on the right, over here, this would be a really good way to create the background for the Van Gogh Almond Tree Project if you want to be able to see your brush strokes. <coughs> Excuse me. Van Gogh had heavy application of color. Monet had a softer look to his artwork. We're doing a little bit of both, so you can choose which one you want to do for your project. We are going to add our white to our paintings, and we're going to make this look like clouds, and this look like dapples on water. Dapples meaning little spots of light where it gets shiny. So I'm going to take a paper towel and I'm going to rip it in half. Ooh, that was pretty good. Lots of practice. And I'm going to crumple it up into a little ball so I can hang on to it on the top and it's round and crumpled on the bottom. Then I'm going to dip into my white paint just ever so slightly and I can make big fluffy clouds. And I can reload my paper towel. The nice thing about using a paper towel is it absorbs a lot of the paint so you don't get your paint super duper messy. So big splotches of white, heavy application of paint, but small movements. A little bit more. Big puffy clouds. Oh yeah, that looks great. When I'm done with this, I can throw it away. And I can grab my other paper towel. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to crumple it up so I get a little ball with a little handle on the end. And then I'm going to dip it into my white, and this is a little bit different. Now in class we would use texture rollers, but I know that not everybody has the super cool texture rollers that I have in my art room, and I don't expect you to, because they're a little bit, you know, weird and kind of pricey. So I'm using what we probably have at home, paper towel or napkin, and we're going to make the dapples on the water like Monet, so pay attention. I've dipped it into my white and now I'm going to just make spots by picking up and putting down my paper towel that has paint on it. So you can make spots that look big or small, but you want to spread it out more so it looks like the light dancing on the water in a pond or a river or even the ocean, but little and big spots all over. It's still a lot of paint layered on your paper, but I think now you can kind of tell the difference. You can see that these are much heavier and a lot more paint, and this is a little bit less paint. But we're using the same color on the same background colors and getting two very different looks. So, now that you have your background, you can close up your paints. Make sure you close them up tight so they don't end up on you or anyone else, or the floor, or anywhere else they shouldn't be. Make sure your name is on the back of your paper so you know whose artistry is whose. And now you have a decision to make. You can move forward with your Van Gogh puffy puffy clouds to create a Van Gogh almond tree painting, or you can create a 3D mixed media picture that is based on Monet's water lilies. Dappled and dabbed, and I hope you have a great day.